Retrieval augmented generation is one of the biggest ways enterprise companies make money because that translates into direct business value. So there is always innovation happening on that side. So even if you improve the quality of LLM, you have to figure out ways to improve RAG so that any chatbot or any uh, internal search system that you have deployed in your company or you're deploying it for somebody else would have improvement. And that improvement directly means a dollar value. And it is always easy to sell a solution if there is an improvement in dollar value. On that context, Anthropic has released a new retrieval technique for efficient RAG. This technique is called contextual retrieval. The techniques might sound actually something like very scientific and very big, but the technique is very simple and it might be also an upsell for Anthropic. So there is there is a bit of uh, selling their own solution, but it is very interesting what they have come up with and the kind of metrics and the improvements that they have seen. Let's get started with the video. First of all, the typical current RAG system would look like this. Uh, not Many companies would not even have RAG system like this, but let's say for the sake of discussion, you have got the text corpus inside your company. Um, it could be PDF, it could be web pages, it could be a bunch of other documents. So anyways, you have got it as a corpus, let's say text corpus. And what you're going to do now is you're going to create chunks. So you're going to either do the embedding model thing and then store it in vector database. Some people do both. One, you would have like embedding models, vector database. And the other thing is you also have TF IDF, which stands for term frequency and IDF that stands for inverse document frequency. And uh, this is a way to uh, measure certain uh, elements in the document in and itself, the corpus in and itself. So you create the embeddings, you create TF IDF and then you store it. Now, whenever the user queries, so this is a batch process. Let's say this happens every day in your company. Whenever the user queries, now that query comes to your uh, system, existing system, and uh, the query comes to this, and it retrieves from the vector database, and it retrieves from the TF IDF index, and then it gets fused here in Rank Fusion, and then it goes into the generative model because ultimately you need an LLM to evaluate whatever the document you're giving and collect it or correlate with the question that the user is asking and handcraft a human-like answer with the knowledge that it got. So this is the typical RAG system. Like I said, even this is not what a lot of companies do, but this is a decent RAG system. User asks a question, existing knowledge is embedded and stored here, and there is an algorithm that retrieves everything and then uses an LLM finally gives an answer. Now what Anthropic is suggesting is, Anthropic is saying, hey, don't do any of those things, do something different. And that they call us, I mean, you can do all of those things, but along with that, do something different, which they call as contextual retrieval pre-processing. What is contextual retrieval pre-processing? You would see it's exactly the same, except that you want to use an LLM. I mean, Anthropic can sell more calls. Um, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. They have done a good thing. They've shared the research. I'm just saying that it will help LLM companies sell more calls. So Anthropic is saying after you do the chunking um, initially, even before embedding the model, even before doing TF-IDF, all you have to do is send every chunk through a large language model. I mean, if you have got human beings, you can use human beings to do this, but typically you wouldn't have such a large human being at scale um, to work on this. So you have to send it to large language model and use the large language model to create a small sentence that would end up as a context in front of every chunk. And the context is what? In a large document, what is the situation during which this sentence was present? Okay, so let's look at an example. The example is this. The original chunk was this, right? Okay, what is a chunk? You've got a large corpus, like a big paragraph, and then you are splitting it into smaller pieces. This is a chunk. So now you have got a chunk uh, from SEC filings and it says the company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter. Now, typically what you would do, this is what you would have as a chunk. You would send it to embedding model. You would send it to TFIDF. You calculate the way you store it in vector database. You store it in TFIDF index. This is what you would typically do. Now, what Anthropic is saying is that no, 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 no. There is one small or nuanced thing that you can do and that can improve your accuracy or retrieval massively. And what is that thing? You have to prepend or prefix a chunk context. So you are going to take this 
and then send it to an LLM. Ask the LLM to situate this particular sentence in the document at a context. Let's look at the context. What is the context? This chunk is from an CC filing on ACME Corp's performance in Q2 2023. The previous quarter's revenue was $314 million. The company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter. So the company's revenue grew by 3% over the previous quarter remains the same, except that now there is a context that is added. So hence it is a contextualized chunk. And they've also given you the prompt template for you to use to create the contextualized chunk. So you have got the whole document, which is like the whole page. And you give this document and then say that, okay, here is a chunk we want to situate within the whole document. Please give a short, a succinct context to situate this chunk within the overall document for the purpose of improving the search retrieval of the chunk. Answer only with a succinct context and nothing else. So this is uh, very important because now the chunk that you are sending it to an LLM and the context that you are going to get is based on the quality of the LLM. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. So it's not like a fail safe solution. So there is a bit of uncertainty that you are adding here. So until see, this is all math, uh, embedding model is math, TFIDF is math, vector DB is math, TFIDF index is math. This is like a defined process. You know, A goes inside, you, you know, B comes outside. Uh, that's not the case here. So you're adding a little bit of uncertainty, um, a stochastic process in here. But anyways, uh, Anthropic is saying that for every prompt, Claude responds with 50 to 100 tokens of context, which is then prepended to the corresponding chunk. So that is how you create the contextualized chunk. Now with the contextualized chunk, you're going to do the same thing that you have done there. So you're going to create contextualized embeddings and then you're going to create contextual BM25 bm25 index now that is finally going to help you do certain improvements according to anthropic so what is that so number of failed retrievals uh, so this is a uh, 20 top 20 chunk retrieval if you see the percentage number of failed retrievals in the contextual chunk here so the lower is better has gone down 35 percent so from 5.7 percent to 3.7 percent so at this point, I will always encourage you to pause, think. If you are a company, you want to improve your RAG. Now you need to make a call. This is a two percentage point difference. Okay, in two percentage points or in terms of percentage, it is 35 percentage. How business critical is what you are doing where this two percentage point or a two percent of 35 percent difference makes a huge impact on your business numbers. If those metrics do not matter, I mean, like, for example, and a lot of business, it doesn't matter, like from from the way, you know, I've worked with companies consulted, uh, implemented rag and all those things. It doesn't matter. This percentage doesn't matter unless until it is business critical. Imagine you're a doctor and doctor needs to retrieve something and it has to be absolutely accurate. If you give a metric of a different patient, the patient might die like it's a life or death situation there. These things matter. But in a lot of enterprise context, um, imagine the uh, the um, employee of the company is trying to find out some HR document. So you don't need to have this much reduction in the failure rate. I mean, this is a good technique. I'm not saying this is a bad technique. Don't take me wrong. All I'm saying is that you're adding more uncertainty to the model. You're adding more overhead. You're adding more maintenance. You're adding more dependencies. If you're going to do that, you have to understand the cost of it. And when I mean cost, it's not just the cost cost in terms of the dollar value, but also like, for example, you're going to add more tokens to it. You're going to increase the size of the embedding. So you're going to do all these things. So keep that in mind. Improvement is always good. You watch a YouTube tutorial. There's a new technique. You want to implement it. All these things are always good, but is it business critical? If it is business critical, go ahead and implement. And we have got clear numbers here that there is a 35% reduction in the retrieval rate failure for top 20 chunk. And when you combine uh, embedding, contextual embeddings with contextual BM25 that is further reduced uh, as a 4.9%. So you can see only embedding, embedding plus BM25. Um, again here, contextual embedding, contextual embedding plus BM25 here. So these are there. There are certain nuances that you have to consider. Like for example, how do you split? One of the easiest ways to improve your RAG solution itself is to implement better chunking strategies. And uh, there are a lot of different chunking strategies. A simple Google search will help you understand that. 
option one option two uh, embedding model what kind of embedding models that you are using like uh, if you were to use an easier embedding model what the number of the dimension of the embedding model all these things matter so whereas contextual retrieval improves the performance across all embedding models we tested some models may benefit more than others we found gemini and voyage embeddings to be particularly effective so custom contextualizer prompts you can play with the prompt that they've given number of chunks so all these things that you can change and then see how the improvement is going on one final part before we uh, close down this video so one we got to know that this is a good standard rag solution option one um, when you combine the uh, typical embedding part with bm25 it further becomes a better two we have got to know that three we know that adding chunks with context makes a difference we know that how do you want to create the context it's up to you you want a human you want an llm you want to use gemini whatever you want to do you can do it but we also know that it is going to add overhead cost maintenance and all those things and finally there is one more interesting aspect here which is a re-ranking so anthropic has also found that if you add re-ranking to the existing system that they have created which is a contextual retrieval system and re-ranking does not happen in the pre-processing state that's something that you have to keep in mind re-ranking happens during inference like for example the user is asking a question before you send the retrieved augmented item to the llm for generation what you have to do is you have to put in a re-ranker there and ask the re-ranker i think re-rankers are typically like cross encoders um, a lot of re-rankers exist in the market paid solutions are there free solutions are there now you can ask a re-ranker to re-rank your existing system and then uh, the retrieved items and then send it to an llm like large language model generative model to create the response and anthropic has found that this further improves the system so what are the steps perform the initial retrieval just like you have been doing pass the top n chunks along with the user query through a re-ranking model using a re-ranking model give a chunk score based on the relevance importance to the prompt then select the top k so you're just going to do top 20 but you're going to change the order and then select the top 20 pass the top k chunks into the model as context to generate the final result and that has further improved the model so from 5.7 percent it came to 3.7 percent just in case if you're just starting here this is a failed retrieval rate for top 20 chunks so lesser is better so it says that the failure rate is only 3.5 so now combining embedding with uh, bm25 with re-ranking gets you to 3.75 uh, sorry 3.5 my apologies and uh, this is the standard one but with contextual retrieval this comes down to below two percent below two percent failed retrieval rate and uh, that is amazing but like i said there are some implications that you have to keep in mind the most important thing is is it business critical for you that's one thing but the other things that you have to have is embeddings plus bm25 is better than embeddings on their own which we understood and uh, voyage and gemini have the best embeddings of the uh, test that they've done and uh, the top 20 chunks to the model is more effective than top 10 or top 5 so if you are looking for the k value the 20 is the magical number here adding context to the chunk improves the retrieval accuracy which is what this whole paper is about re-ranking is better than no re-ranking and uh, they've got a bunch of other information one important consideration is re-ranking will introduce a latency because what you're doing is you're doing it at the inference stage you're trying to do a one additional step like it could be an endpoint it could be something else but you're going to take like let's say you have got like a, a hundred retrieved here and that hundred is going into re-ranking and you're going to ask the re-ranker to re-rank and give a score and a relevance and importance and do like a descending order sort and then send it to a large language model so there is going to be a latency there and definitely there is a cost element a cost element is not just with respect to re-ranking but cost element is also with respect to the 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 pre-processing here but this is a batch process this is going to happen in the midnight when everybody is sleeping but this is going to happen at the runtime when the user is requesting something so you have to weigh all these uh, cost benefit analysis and then figure out if it is useful for you but this is a very interesting uh, approach a lot of people are trying to look for like deep scientific way you can improve the retrievals uh, or rag but this is a very uh, common sense approach and i really love that they've put out a blog post to explain this 
I'm going to probably look and see if we can implement this as an open source solution. But anyways, otherwise, I hope this video was helpful to you in learning something new in RAG, especially if you're working for RA enterprise companies trying to implement RAG. This could be particularly handy for your promotion. See you in another video. Happy prompting.